In the last video, we defined the tokens for our language. Now we need to create a lexer that will take our source code and convert it into those tokens. Our lexer will work through, line by line, character by character, determining how to partition the source code into a series of tokens. And the best way to study the lexer, I believe, is to go ahead and start coding it. Let's go ahead and define the skeleton of our lexer class. Nothing crazy going on here. Our lexer will have four internal variables to manage its state. Input, which is just the source code we will be providing to the lexer. Position, which marks the position of the character we just read. As we move this position through the input, character by character, we can think of our lexer as consuming the input. Read position, which marks the position of the character in the input that we will read next. There are times when we want to peek several characters ahead, and we will use read position to do so and ch, which will contain the character that we just consumed. Next, let's create a method that will consume one character of our input. Let's call it readchar. First, we check that we have source code left to consume. If we don't, we set our character equal to zero, which will signify that we are done. If we do have more source code, we will consume the very next character and store it in ch. We then increment l position and read position. Remember that position will keep track of the last consumed index of our input, whereas read position will allow us to look at what is coming next. The next thing that we are going to do is write a method that will read several characters, build a token, and return it to the user. We're going to call this method getToken. For now, let's only concern ourselves with the tokens that will consist of one character, such as left parentheses, as they are the easiest to parse, as opposed to the equality token or the keywords func, let, and return. Here we mark the return type as token, and we create the variable we are going to return. Then we add a switch statement to start our logic. Nothing much is going on. Here we have added the left and right brackets, and we will use this pattern for all our one character tokens. We are also using a helper function create token that we will go ahead and write now. This is all just for cleanliness and eye appeal. All we are doing here is returning a new instance of a token. Now, let's go ahead and expand our get token method to encompass all the single character token types. We follow the same pattern as with the brackets, with the exception for the case of zero, we return end of file. Remember that our character will be zero if we have no more tokens left to consume in our input. Notice, however, that this call to get token on the first call will only function if we have a character already present in our ch variable. Because of this, when we first instantiate our lexer, we immediately will call readchar, which will prime our lexer, so to speak. So let's go ahead and pause here. This is all well and good, but it will be much more exciting if we can actually test our lexer as we write it. Right now we have this code, but we have no way to test it. In the very next video, we will create a console for our language where we can type in source code and it will show us the tokens that we are inputting. Afterwards, we will complete our lecture. See you there.